Hunter x Hunter Season 1 Episode 5, The Training Exam Arc. Still more running. I will just straight up murder you. I feel like you could just straight up murder, murder him, murder them. Anyone who runs, what is it, a thousand kilometers in a suit should not be messed with. Hisoka X is X sneaky. <laughs> this is just so, it's so brutal. Curious to see what the challenge will be. I mean, just don't, don't trust the animals, which you think would have been obvious, but. This poor guy. Can't lag. Can't lag behind. Oh no. Something's going on. Damn, this guy's instincts. Yeah, it really feels like there are no rules here. And also, it's, it feels unnecessary. Like, why? Still not sure why they're like trying to eliminate the other people when there's no clear quota. The hunter profession just selects for the crazy and the petty. And also Gon. Though I think Gon does fall into the crazy category. He's got that child crazy. No regard for his own life. <laughs> Gon has the Gon is like all of the Demon Slayer characters put together with with his senses, everything except for a sense of self preservation. I like how they're sticking together, these two. It's also great how Gon and Klo already feel like best friends, so I like just saying hi to each other. What the hell? Don't trust the strawberries. <laughs> Don't trust the floating strawberries. As much as that might feel intuitively obvious. No one told us that decapitation was on the menu. Yeah, not a very subtle trick there. Just eating you. Just eating you off the path. Okay, I'm starting to see. There are more, more hazards here than just deception. Just straight up death. Oh god, if, if Mushroom Girl from My Academia was a mine. Some of us will, will pass this hunter exam, but but at what cost? <laughs> Man, it's really picking up. Just like everything all at once. And what do they do after they hypnotize you? They just like suck your brains out? Oh no, oh no. That that doesn't look like him. That's not elegant enough. Okay, I severely underestimated the hazards of this forest. I was like, it's, you know, simple. Oh, bye. It's just simple. Follow this the elegant guy. And... Wow, the stakes are high. That bird again. Bird is the true true threat. That's why I never trust birds. No, they are not. They are in the midst of battle with strawberry covered dinosaurs. Oh, it's like the thing from Star Wars. She didn't leave him. She could have left him. He, sorry, damn it. Ugh. He could have totally just left him, but didn't. Do they still have the laxatives? Yeah, that's what it was. Good thinking. <laughs> this kid, so confident. Their relationship, I mean, it's only been a couple episodes, but there's something really special about it. I mean, one of the most typical things you come across is characters like this who are, you know, kind of same age, same same position, same place. Almost by default, they're kind of rivals. <laughs> Gon and Killua just seem like so chill and on the same page. I had never even thought about it before the episode where they met, but like that really, my memory is how a lot of my friendships formed. Like you just, you're next to someone and you have similar enough wavelengths that you're just kind of automatically friends. There's no, or less of the kind of measuring up comparison, feeling out that you do as adults. That being said, and it's hard to draw parallels directly to real life because it's a show where there are a lot of otherworldly fantasy things happening. But like, I can't help but feel a little bit concerned for them as kids for a couple of different reasons. I mean, one, just their age. The fact that they're both naive in slightly different ways, like Gon is just naive to danger. Also, he's just like this kid who wants to be loved. Kalua's bravado is almost definitely masking something, however great he actually may be. And also, given their differences in personality, it's not hard to imagine Gon falling into like a follower position to a certain extent with Kalua because he's just so nice and pure and Kalua is kind of a authoritative, and that dynamic often goes in a very predictable way. Nope, nope, nope. Oh, okay. Oh, what? okay. Now keep it moving. Right, so you think you have more important things to worry about. 
逆に僕が試験官を気取った君たちを。The crazy and the petty. For his death, right? I would say they're in danger,、uh, you know, as witnesses, but no one really seems to care anyway. Murder! <laughs> That's the Hunter Award for the day. Right. I mean, you probably could have killed him if you wanted to. <laughs> Damn, those squirrels just wasted no time. Wow. Whoa. Seems unwise, but I don't know. I don't know. Is this really the hill you want to die on? Gone. So his sense actually kicked in. Didn't expect them, expect them to fight the last boss of this exam arc in the second round. No magic tricks there, just an uppercut. This is still better than running. Might have worked better without the scream. Pass what? What is it? Huh. So he's got some kind of compass after all. I, I'm like, I mean, to his credit, he's a creep, but he did get attacked in that situation. It's not like he murdered someone. Just for bumping into him. <laughs> Surprisingly wholesome. I wonder, like, what this is setting this character up for. It's odd. Could be villain, might not be. This is like a, a good taste of mortality for a Gon, though. It's the kind of thing that changes a person, you would imagine. Honestly, it's astounding that this many people, again, passed that round. Now it's time for round three running. <laughs> Yeah, Tanjiro. Tanjiro smell. Was it power or was it like their, their ethics? Man, what threats are, <laughs> what threats are hunters paid to eliminate if people like Hisoka are acceptable? I'm suddenly very interested in what his greater vision is or plan. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely a significant event. He needed something like that. My guess is that by the end, there's going to be like 10 people left at this rate. I don't even know how many stages there are, but I just hope for their sakes the next stage is like a pie eating contest, something other than marathon running. This episode is really interesting because it kind of departed from the exam in a certain sense, but it feels like it's developing some very significant things for the long run. One is Hisoka's character. There's a couple ways it can go, and they're all interesting. I mean, the initial thought is like villain, and that's possible, but if he is a villain, there's something else there that's compelling. He has some kind of structure, some kind of mental system in terms of what he's after, which could make for an interesting villain. It'd also be really Interesting if 
he's not actually a villain, but, you know, kind of a questionable ally, though that seems somewhat unlikely. Definitely being established as massively powerful and a threat. More than that, for me, I think is what happened with Gon. Like, my initial thought seeing that happen was, this does address a problem I felt in the first four episodes, where Gon just is a kid, he doesn't understand the danger. But actually, his reflections on it at the end suggest that, though a lot of this is spurned by him being naive, it might actually be a great fit for him. Like, I think a good test of whether something is right, you know, whether a pursuit is right, is how well you deal with the, the negative aspect of things, the difficulty of things, the danger of things. Obviously, it's very easy to desire the rewards of any given thing, but at the same time, perhaps one of the most valuable things in any particular journey won't be the rewards necessarily, but the challenges or the darkness of those things. It's not really an adventure, it's not really growth unless there's something difficult, dark, painful, etc. about that pursuit, because it's what's forcing you to come up against truths that are sort of hidden from you. This is a very weird example and weird to throw in here, but I was thinking about something like this the other day or something related. At times I've mentioned my my previous relationship, which was very exciting, tumultuous, wonderful, devastating, all of that. She sort of reemerged in my life recently in a very limited and surprising way. When I was talking to a friend who was showing me his his most recent bubble match, which was her. And at first, as you might imagine, I'm sure you can understand, there was a little bit of a sting, right, to imagine her on bubble dating. But that led to like a, an inquiry for me of like, well, of course she's dating, right? Neither of our lives end at separation. So the question is, why is it easier to fathom that thought when it's a hypothetical and imagined as opposed to when it's a concrete thing I'm looking at in front of me? You might think, right, if you're being purely rational, objective, the vision or, or tangible evidence of something happening should hurt no more than the knowledge of the fact that something is happening. And perhaps there's a better answer than this, but perhaps what it suggests is that there's a little bit of delusion in the way I'm conceptualizing an element of life. Like what I'm not seeing isn't happening in some key emotional way. Generally speaking, it's great to live in the light. There's something to be said practically of just not surrounding oneself with things that are negative or painful. So the answer is not always to seek out the, the darkness or the things that are painful. At the same time, there's something about the darkness that's a test and reveals the accuracy of your conception. And I can imagine a state or maybe just a goal where you're not hiding from any part of life, right? You you understand the darkness in its fullness and you've, you've really come to a very robust, robust and sound place in regard to that, which is maybe stronger in, in some elements than keeping a blind eye to it. I mean, even since I was young, I remember having a certain fascination with darkness. I think that's partly why we like watching media that, that involve great darkness, why some people are, are drawn to it. I mean, my particular example is I, I love sleaze. Like, I love finding sort of darker elements, more shady elements of society and engaging with them. And it's kind of playing with fire a little bit because, you know, that saying, if you look too far into the abyss, it it becomes you or whatever. Definitely something to that. You can get eaten by it and you can be warped by it. At the same time, I think there's like a path beyond it where if you go into it and don't let it consume you or warp you for the worse, you come to something like an understanding of it and you see how it connects to the whole. You can recognize objectively that certain practices are bad for you, but it becomes a little bit less of a threat. It's like there's no more predators lurking in the dark jungle. It's just they are elements of life like anything else. And you can even see that they are the, the other side or, or just a shadow side of other things that are good. There's something about knowing things giving names to things that actually reduces their danger. Maybe the biggest dangers are not the, the known dangers, but the unknown dangers, the things that are lurking. And just because you don't know them, just because you're, you're blind to them doesn't mean they aren't there, right? So isn't it better in, in some level conceptually to face them head on, to look at the deepest depths of darkness, to recognize them in yourself or your capacity for them, to have the full picture so that you can determine what things are right, what things feel right, what things feel wrong. Does that not help one chart a more accurate, productive course? Gun wants to be a hunter. We still don't know that much about the hunter life at this point, but obviously it's a dark world. Obviously there's danger. I think what's so notable about Gon's reaction is that he felt it and didn't shy away from it. Even more, it like activated his curiosity. And just first impression, I don't think he's going to be the kind of person to succumb to it. He has all the character traits of someone who's able to fully get it and also rise above it and then actually maybe do some good.